So in this video, what we're going to demonstrate is the access point registration with the Smart Zone controller. So we've discussed in other videos, uh, there's kind of a top-down type of configuration with this environment in that you're going to set up the Smart Zone controller itself, configure that, then the, the next process would be to configure the access points and then the WLANs uh, to set up this environment. So at this point, what we've done is we've actually uh, configured our smart zone controller, uh, so you get the initial setup ready. We've done some of the initial access point uh, configuration. We've created domains, we've created zones uh, to put our access points in. So at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and have some of the access points start communicating with the smart zone controller in applying settings and updating firmware to those particular access points. Once we've done that, we can also create WLANs and uh, go ahead and, and uh, assign WLANs to specific zones. So when we're wanting the access point to actually start communicating with the controller, we have a couple of different options when it comes to pointing those access points to those particular controllers. Uh, so the first thing we have is the access point GUI which provides and specifies a primary and secondary controller uh, that you can specify uh, in the GUI to point to that access point to the controller. Another option we have is the CLI, which we'll be doing in this demonstration, where we go ahead and set uh, use the set SCG IP command. You also might use the, uh, for older access points, you might use the set director IP uh, command. Again, it depends on which uh, AP you're running and which firmware. Uh, but we have the CLI that we can use to, to point this access point to a particular controller. Another option is using DHCP uh, and then also DNS. Um, so with DHCP, there's an option uh, that can be specified that basically gives the client access point, if they're set up for DHCP, to obtain information about where that controller resides. With DNS, what we can go ahead and do is specify uh, an address or an A record for uh, the particular controllers. And what will end up happening is when the access point comes online, it can start go ahead and, and uh, communicate with the controller. Again, if we have an A record for Ruckus controller um, in DNS. Uh, and then what ends up happening with any of these methods is once we're actually contact the controller, uh, we'll go ahead and get an event entry on the, the smart zone itself. Another consideration we have when we're trying to have the access points uh, talking to the controllers, uh, that you need to understand that most likely these are gonna be in WAN type of uh, situations where an access point uh, is going over a WAN to uh, connect to the controller. So obviously there, there, there will be firewalls and things like that uh, in between a, a particular access point and the controller that's managing it. So what's important to, to note is that when we're setting up this environment is to go ahead and reference the administrator guide, which will give us information uh, about the ports that actually need to be open on the firewall. Uh, so it's a lengthy list. Um, they they do have descriptions in in the admin guide that kind of give you an understanding of each specific port and you know wh whether that needs to be open for a, for a specific function. The other resource that will be helpful uh, when you're going through this type type of deployment, if you do do end up having uh, any kinds of issues with an access point joining a controller or being managed by a controller. Uh, we have an excellent video on YouTube uh, by one of our master instructors uh, entitled Troubleshooting AP Connectivity with Smart Zone 3.5. And what he does is go through the process of access points actually uh, registering with the controller and some of the issues you might see uh, when that's, that process is, is happening. Okay, so I'm connected to uh, a new access point that I have. Uh, this access point is straight from the factory. Um, so I've just unboxed it and, and gone ahead and made a connection to it. What I want to do is, is go ahead and, and prior to directing an access point to smart zone uh, controller or in the past with even with the, the zone director controllers, um, what I need to know is, is the firmware version uh, because it does 
change uh, the commands that will be used for the controller and connecting to the controller. So from here, what I'm going to do is do a, um, a firmware show all. I've got two banks or two images uh, of firmware that's actually on the machine. Most likely, they're going to be exactly the same. Uh, but you see here, I've got uh, the 200.5. 200.5 is unleashed firmware that comes by default on access points. And uh, if I look, go down here to the other image, uh, I also have the same, the same firmware there. So what's important here is that um, this is a new access point uh, again, and the firmware, if you see a 200 dot, uh, that means it's the firmware straight from, um, from the factory. Previously, we were in the hundreds, so we had you know 100 dot or 100, 104. Um, and so what that tells you is basically there, there hasn't been a controller firmware necessarily on uh, this particular access point. So it, it will, the older access points are, are the ones that are of concern because you'll actually be using different commands uh, to connect the access point to the controller. So after I've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back down. Um, I, I'm gonna just go ahead and use the, uh, you know, the, the current commands that will connect me to the smart zone controller. So what I'm gonna type in is uh, set SCG IP, and then I'm specifying the IP address of my smart zone controller uh, that I wanted to manage this access point. It comes back with a simple reply of OK. It'll start connecting and, and communicating with the, the smart zone controller. OK, so we've directed our access points uh, to talk to our controller. Um, so what I want to go ahead and show you is I've got two examples here. Um, of what you're going to see based on which controller you're actually using. So I have a virtual smart zone high scale controller on this tab here. And then if I switch over here, I also have an essentials uh, controller that have a couple access points um, being directed towards that as well. So I just want to point out the differences between uh, the two ver versions of smart zone. So going back to high scale, uh, notice right off the bat, uh, I now have uh, two access points that are showing up on my dashboard. Uh, nothing much else, the global uh, setting here for the map, um, nothing's really been defined of where the physical locations of those access points are. Um, so it's just, you know, the, the standard map that you're going to have. But do notice that we've got uh, two access points that are uh, online uh, on our graph here, or excuse me, our dashboard. So I'm going to go down to the access points menu. And this should look familiar to you um, if, you're, if you've got experience with the high scale controller is that uh, I've got some stuff that's been pre-populated here. I've got a partner domain. I've got some subdomains that are basically under the root system domain. Um, so I've got a UK uh, subdomain and I've also got a US subdomain. Uh, and then we actually have the staging zone here as well. So from the, par the, par the part of the actual discovery aspect of, of things, the staging zone in a high scale controller is where the access points actually end up uh, going or being placed in. Uh, and they're, they're put into the access point uh, default group. And so you see here, I've got two controllers, or excuse me, two access points uh, that are now pointing to this controller. So the other part to, to understand is that really beyond the initial communication with the controller, nothing else has necessarily happened. So let's say if I click on uh, this one particular access point and I scroll down, notice that I, the connection status is, is I'm still in a discovery uh, status. So there's not much that's, that's happened uh, at this point uh, with this particular access point. I've got other information of a firmware and things like that, but the nothing has necessarily happened with zone configuration or firmware at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do is obviously we don't want to leave the access points in the staging zone. We actually want to move them uh, to a particular zone. So what I want to do is actually move these access points uh, to their target zone. So if you notice here on the US, I've actually got two different zones that are actually created already. I've got an Atlanta zone and I've got a California zone. 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move these two access points to their target zone. So with the uh, MAC address that ends with the 50 here, I go ahead and select on that and I click on the move button. I'm going to expand the US subdomain and then I'm going to select the Atlanta zone. And click OK. Confirm. And then the other access point, I'm going to move to the California zone. Okay, so now if I go to one of those particular APs in their respective target zone, uh, we can start looking at some of the information uh, and the events that are, that are actually being triggered at this point. Um, so I select the access point, I come down to the event tab. You'll see here that I've got the a discovery request uh, to the virtual smart zone has been logged. And after refreshing the event log, uh, notice that I, I've got the uh, the virtual smart zone has approved the access point. Uh, so when I moved it to the target zone, uh, that's the process that happened. It's basically doing the approval of that access point. Um, then the AP uh, is rebooted. And then we've got um, the configuration is actually being sent to that particular AP. So once I re refresh again, uh, notice that I've got uh, this, this entry here, AP configuration updated. Um, so it's gone through the process and actually have updated the configuration for this particular access point after we went ahead and moved the access point to the target zone. Um, so another thing is that if uh, I had a, a brand new access point or an access point that didn't have the firmware uh, that's be associated with that particular zone, that would be updated as well. Um, this particular access point already had that happen, but that would be part of the process. You would see events logged here um, for that process. So if I go to the general tab, I should have the firmware that, that um, is used in this particular zone. Um, I should come down here and see connected as a status for that particular access point. Um, and at this point, our access point is, is ready for, it's, it's been moved to its target zone and then it's ready for any kind of WLAN configuration um, as well. So let's go ahead and look at what we're seeing on the essentials controller. So I've got two access points here. Go ahead and go to the access points menu. Um, notice that I don't have a staging zone. Okay, so the essentials controller doesn't have the concept of any kind of multi-tenancy and it, and it doesn't have the concept of subdomains. We do have the system root domain, but below that what we're gonna have is actually zones uh, and we won't have multiple subdomains that are created in the essentials controller. So what does happen is that the access points get put into what's referred to as the default zone in the default access point group, okay? So kind of like the staging zone to a certain degree, um, but it's not placed into a, a target zone uh, until you actually manually move that. So another key co configuration aspect to, to look for are two different things. So if I go to the system menu here, and then go to access points. I just wanted to kind of point this out um, so that you're aware of it. So you do have the option uh, for the system to automatically approve all join requests from APs. Um, so what this will end up happening, instead of having to actually approve any of them, um, they'll go ahead and go online uh, and being connected to the controller um, right off the bat. So the the controller itself will go ahead and, and, and uh, approve these instead of having to manually approve them. Um, and another thing is that um, what we can do with AP registration is I can create a rule that will look for things different, the different parameters here. So you see under rule type, I've got IP uh, address range, I've got a subnet I can define, GPS coordinates and provisioning tags. Um, but let's say I wanted to create a rule that, uh, you know, for example, if, if any 
access point that's coming from a particular subnet, I want to go ahead and, and uh, approve that and actually place that into a zone, I can go ahead and define the subnet and then define which zone that I actually want that access point to be placed in. I can go ahead and set that up so this automatically happens. So if I go back to the access points, I've got them in the default zone, and it's also in the default um, access point group. Same process here. I select it, select one of the access points, click move, and then I'll go ahead and put it in the in the target zone, which is whatever zone I've defined uh, that, I, that I'm wanting to actually place these access points into. Okay, so that's that's really the main differences between the essentials controller uh, and the high scale controller. So back on the high scale controller, if I go into the system menu, I just want to point out that we also do have uh, the ability to make settings for an AP registration and create the same type of rule where you have IP address, subnet, um, provisioning tags, and GPS coordinates. If I select on the dashboard, notice that I, when I define those zones, I actually put GPS coordinates in those particular zones. Uh, notice that I've got uh, one of the access points I can see here um, is in the, the, the California zone, the CA zone. Uh, and I've got information about that particular access point. And also I have the Atlanta zone. Uh, and also have information about that as well. Uh, so again, uh, that information came from the zone configuration. So once I placed those particular access points in uh, that particular zone, uh, it went ahead and took that information. The map automatically updates uh, based on my, our access points. So and in, in those locations, if you've got multiple or if you have multiple uh, access points in that particular location, uh, you can kind of uh, click click through and down through that to, to see more relevant information about those particular access points.